Pollen is the way a plant can actually reproduce sexually. So the pollen is produced in male flowers and it's sent over to a female flower. Pollen gets mostly spread by insects, but about 10 to 15% of plants can actually produce pollen that they spread through the wind. And because obviously wind isn't as direct, they produce vast quantities of pollen. And the vast quantities are obviously in the air that we breathe, and therefore as humans we can actually become allergic to these pollens. And the most common symptoms are hay fever, but it can also cause problems for people with asthma. Recently we've been seeing a pollen called ragweed in our air samples, and this is completely unexpected. We've got data sets going back over 40 years and normally most years we haven't seen any at all. Some years we see maybe one grain or two grains in a day and I think historically at the most we've had five grains and that was it for a year. Now instead we've had ragweed in the air on four consecutive days and on one of the days it actually went well above the level which is known to cause symptoms in people who are allergic to it. So that is a completely unexpected observation. The thing about ragweed is ragweed produces its pollen in the late summer and early autumn and therefore if we start to get more and more ragweed in this area at that time of year it could actually extend the hay fever season for some for people who may be allergic to it. We follow the British Air Biological Federation's guidelines for collecting pollen. So we actually have traps which are situated on a roof at the university, about 10 to 12 metres above the sea. And this is the level that most of the trap sites throughout the UK will also be having. The trap actually has a weather vane attached to it, so the weather vane will move the pollen, so the trap is always facing towards the prevailing wind. And then the air wind gets sucked in through a slit that's two millimetres wide and it's deposited onto a, um, what we call a drum or a slide. We coat the drum or the slide with a sticky surface so any air that's pulled in actually impacts on the sticky surface and we can then use that later in the lab. So it means over the course of a day we have a 24 millimetre trace. So we can then take this to the lab, we can put the sticky surface onto a microscope slide and stain it and look at it down the microscope. And then we can identify the different pollens, but not only can we say what the different pollens are, we can say how many of them there are. We can actually convert it to the average amount that was in the air, so we can get very accurate measurements. I like the fact that I have two aspects to what I do. I have the environmental aspect where I'm looking to see what's in the air and I also have the clinical aspect so I'm actually looking at what's affecting people and I'm actually finding ways to help them. So with the pollen we're obviously giving advice to hay fever sufferers through the MARA website and also through the Met Office and our connections with the national, the UK pollen network. But with our clinical stuff we're actually working with people with asthma, COPD and other respiratory diseases and we're seeing what actual fungi are affecting them and what fungi are growing in their lungs. So it's bringing together the two um, aspects, that's what I really enjoy.